in Tulsa visiting with Kevin Gustafson of the Oklahoma Conservation Commission. And Kevin's going to be our featured speaker this year at Garden Fest. Well, Kevin, first I want to welcome you to our show. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Oklahoma Conservation Commission, what it is and what it does? Okay, the Conservation Commission, um, my division, the Water Quality Division, receives money, federal money and state money to, um, for water quality projects and water quality information. Um, I wear several hats in the commission. I'm a planner, um, a plan writer, and I also work with the Blue Thumb program. The Blue Thumb program has volunteer monitors. Um, it's a volunteer monitoring program. We train volunteers to do stream monitoring. I'm not m as much involved in that part of Blue Thumb as I am with the education and outreach. And what are the outreach programs targeted towards? The outreach programs are targeted towards what homeowners and landowners be in the in the city or in the country, what they can do to improve water quality um, through their practices that they take place at their home. What are some of the major problems that you're trying to address with the program? Um, well, since I'm largely the urban guy, mm -hmm. so I deal with um, urban practices. And um, so one of the things people don't realize is that their lawns actually have a pretty big impact on the, on the environment. Um, not only do some People use a lot of energy on their lawns mm -hmm. um, uh, with gas or electricity to, to mow it. Um, there are also aspects of um, fertilizing and the chemicals they use in their lawns that when it rains can wash into, onto the street and into the storm drains and directly onto the rivers. Um, fertilizers, when they get to the creek, can cause algae to grow, mm -hmm. um, can eventually cause oxygen levels to drop within the water, fish can die. Um, sediment can clog the spaces between rocks where, where critters live um, that the fish eat. Um, and the pesticides and other chemicals can also cause problems for, um, for critters in the creek. Wildlife. And of course we drink that water eventually too. So. Absolutely. Well as part of your program you educate homeowners on what they can do to have a lower impact on the environment and we're outside of your home where you've incorporated several of these. Why don't we take a yes. look at some of these practices people can adopt. Okay, sure. Well, Kevin, you had mentioned the impact of lawns. What are some things we could do with the lawn areas in our landscape to manage our impact on water quality? Okay, well one of the things that people often do is uh, fertilize just the way they always have done or they see the neighbors are fertilizing so they run out and put fertilizer out. Mm -hmm. um, and very often the lawn doesn't need um, as much fertilizer as people put on. True. As a matter of fact, um, when I moved in to this property five years ago, there was a bag of fertilizer, 19, 19, 19, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and um, potassium. Uh, so a balanced fertilizer, and um, so I had my soil tested, mm -hmm. and I found that the soil test phosphorus levels was was close to 400, which is very high. It's very high. <laughs> that would be, you know, um, mm -hmm. there's a law in Oklahoma that if you live in a sensitive watershed and you're a farmer, if you had soil test phosphorus that high, you wouldn't be allowed to apply any more fertilizer. Okay, but in the home setting, there's uh, no people there's are no control, like and people don't know, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. Um, I was very concerned about the phosphorus um, that's trapped in the soil washing off when it rains. Yeah. Um, especially I planted a lot of trees out by the, by the street and I've seen grass die under the shade and soils washing off and I didn't want that to happen to my house because I know the impact of the streams. Right, right. Um, Other aspects of the lawn, uh, lawn maintenance that we could do? Um, well, one thing that's very mm -hmm. beneficial is mulch mowing. Mm -hmm. So if you get a mulch mower that puts the, the, the grass, the cut grass back into the yard, um, which I've done here, um, then that's a fertilizer in itself. Correct. And so that saves you money on, on buying fertilizer and the time to spread it. Okay. Um, another thing that, um, that may be wise is to get a soil test. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, if you test your soil, then you can know whether or not you need phosphorus fertilizer or not. Mm -hmm. and you, most plants really don't often need it. Uh, most of our soils have plenty of phosphorus in it, so it's a really good idea to get those soil tests. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you don't get your soil tested, 
um, it's a rule of thumb that you're probably best off with phosphorus-free fertilizers as a, as a start. Okay. And the phosphorus is what's the real problem for us in our creeks. Okay, and you had mentioned you were concerned about the water running off of your property and out from under your trees. What are some of the ways that you've um, addressed this problem and started to manage it? Okay, well, one of the things that you can do if you have water that's running off your property mm -hmm. is you can build a rain garden. Okay, and we and have, we have a rain here. garden over here. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's just a low area um, that collects water. And mm -hmm. um, so basically, I just dug out some soil here and I built a berm in the back. Okay. And there's an overflow. And basically, water just comes in and it pulls up here and then it sinks into the ground. Um, it's a beautiful day today, but mm -hmm. we had storms a couple of days ago. We sure did, and a lot of rain. A you lot had three of rain. inches here in Three Tulsa. inches, yes. And what happened with all that rain well, in your landscape? Well, um, we actually had two events, and in the morning we had an inch and a quarter, and it didn't even fill up the rain garden. Um, and it was started to drain out before the next storm, mm -hmm. and that one filled it up. That was the rest of the rain um, that filled up quickly. And, um, and then within a half day, within 12 hours, the water was gone again. And if you hadn't had this sunken area for the water collect, it would have all run out all into the street. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you've tied your roof, um, the gutters from your roof into this garden so that it drains directly into this area. Yes, I do. Yeah, there was a challenge here because I have a slope. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually took the, the, the water coming off of here and I put it under the path okay. and I built a path over it. So water actually comes in from the roof into this side and I've got water coming from that side uh, coming into here. Both of these used to drain through pipes and come out um, on the stairs down towards the road. So the goal was to get all the water away, mm -hmm. um, which is a waste too, because you know, I love it that you know, with uh, even a reasonable amount of rain, the water gets focused here and I don't have to worry about watering all use, these plants. You put that water to good use. Yeah. And I, I think that's an important point, the plants in here you had periods where the water's standing and then it's going to drain away. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we're using plants that are going to be well adapted to that. Definitely, yes. And our, our Oklahoma native plants, many of them are very good at that. I mean, um, we have hot, dry summers and we have periods of wet, especially um, springs can be wet for long periods of time. So a lot of the Oklahoma native plants are really good for, are really good for rain gardens. And that's what I have in here. Um, Another thing, so we talked about phosphorus mm -hmm. being in the soil. So if that comes into this rain garden, then these plants can use that phosphorus. You okay. know? So mm -hmm. the plants are using those fertilizers as opposed to them just washing away mm -hmm. and going into the creeks where we don't need them. Okay. Um, you also mentioned the overflow for your rain garden. Let's take a closer look at that structure and how we can manage the water coming in and out. Okay, great. <laughs> 